Who's not guten tag? Deutsch is German. Dutch is different. It's a different. Uh, I'm not having that. It's all the same. It all sounds the same, doesn't it? Mind you, you think you speak English. Don't well, you speak so. Spanish and France. In this video, folks, we take two YouTubers. We put them in an EV. They drive across five countries in just one day with just one charge of the car. What could possibly go wrong with this? Hmm. Weekends here again. <laughs> the man to your left is YouTuber and car restorer extraordinaire Tom Shorrock. The good looking but not in an obvious way man sitting to your right is me, Jim Starling. So sit back, relax, and join us as we set off across five countries in one day in the epic Hyundai Ionic 6 EV. Something about this just does not feel right. We're driving a car onto a train to go under the sea. I'm an absolute noob at this, never done it before. What an experience. And if you're Francis Pajoyce, there's a locomotive 13. <laughs> Are we going downstairs? Why is it double decker? Yeah. What? There's the little alloy killers at the side oh. there, look. There's the toilet from train spotting. After an early channel crossing on the Euro Tunnel from Folkestone to Calais, we're going to head off towards Dunkirk before going to Bruges in Belgium, then on to Eindhoven in the Netherlands before finally ending up at Duisburg in Germany. The Euro Tunnel was a quick and pain free 30 minute journey, and then we were straight on to our first stop of Dunkirk. Just 35 minutes after we left the Euro Tunnel, we arrived at Dunkirk, our first destination. Just six miles from the Belgian border, Dunkirk is the northernmost town in France and its third largest port. It's hard to imagine that this rather nondescript seaside town was the site of one of World War II's bloodiest battles where tens of thousands of people were killed, wounded or captured. After a whistle-stop visit of Dunkirk, it was time to make the hour-long journey up to Bruges in Belgium. So we're in Bruges, the second stop on this trip. Uh, all right, we know you're taller. No need to be. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, I was actually here two weeks ago with my family, but uh, Tom, this is your first time, isn't it? It's, uh, what do you think, mate? As the Mancunians would say, it's bang on, pal. It's, bang on, it's pal. Absolutely lovely, and there's not a single bit of litter on the floor. I must add, not like us scruffs back in England. It's, That's pretty much true of all of Belgium that we've seen so far, isn't it? and all the motorways. It's so yeah. clean, Europe. Um, Sunak you need to take leaf, mate, and get it in order. No. 
Cheers. Cheers, mate. So we're now leaving Bruges and we're on our way to Eindhoven. Uh, we are going to charge before we get to Eindhoven. We've got uh, two hours, two and a half hours to get there and about 120 miles. Um, to give you an idea of time, it's currently just gone three o'clock in the afternoon. Weather's been absolutely awesome. What do you think of Bruges though, mate? Stunner, absolutely stunner and uh, proper mint, like tidy, clean, pretty picturesque just basically makes where i live look like an absolute poo hole if i'm being honest it's um, well i didn't like to say anything mate but. yeah well it's just you and your north south divide isn't it like this guy calls calls a bacon muffin a roll what is that about a bacon muffin nah a muffin muffin's something that you know you have jam on or something no chocolate you have an egg and a bit of flattened sausage in a mcdonald's it's a cook no it's a cupcake like the cupcakes like a, when people say chocolate muffin is a chocolate muffin it's not it's a cupcake chocolate cupcake anyway you'll you'll learn more about the north south divide between me and jim it's already proven difficult isn't it, what was it earlier mardy Ma or mard mard well don't Ma be a mard mard yeah we'll have to be that but yeah mardy bum i thought you would have known that one which evidently is <coughs> miserable or awkward. Yeah, I'll, I'll have to explain it again for the viewer as yeah. well. Huh? Um, yeah, mad means like upset, like, you know, uh, in in a t like a lover's tiff. So battery, I think by the time we get to Eindhoven, we're going <coughs> to properly need a charge. Um, to be honest, we've got one thing up in miles, one thing up in kilometres. So just bear with us on that. But it seems to have been pretty much true to its word so far the car we've had the aircon blast things it's baking baking hot 30 degrees outside celsius yeah. not fahrenheit yeah so we've had the aircon blasting and obviously when you put the aircon on the range drops by about 10 miles but such is life it's been completely fine so far so we'll have a decent charge there because the battery will be low Hopefully we'll get a really decent rate of charge. We're going to an Ionity. Yeah. This car can obviously handle pretty insane amount of charge. We're going to an Ionity fast charger, so hopefully it'll be all right. Have you driven over here yet? Uh, I've so far. This is my first European drive in a right-hand drive car on the wrong side of the road. Oh. Mm. Yeah. Have you found it so far? comfortable but i think in the city it's a bit stressful because like i'm not quite sure of the right of ways with especially pedestrians and stuff yeah um, i don't want to end up mowing somebody i think don't don't hit them I think, <clears throat> yeah I think that's the general rule they i think their only goal in life is to hit us they just yeah. come out of nowhere they've got the kamikaze cyclists in bruges as well and in much of belgium actually yeah um they're sort of better humans than us so they all go around on bikes but they do seem to have a little bit of a death wish, a bit like Charles Bronson in those films back in the day. <laughs> um, but, um, right, diesel is 158.9. Yeah, there's uh, going to be the diesel price. Petrol is 164, so it's uh, quite a bit cheaper to buy diesel here than it is petrol. And of course, diesel's cheaper wholesale than petrol, but we just have to pay a little bit more for it in our country. Say, uh, saying that though, Costco is quite cheap at home at the minute, as as of today, well the date's wrong, I'll be watching it doesn't help, but as of today, um, diesel you can get a Costco for 131 I paid. Oh today. wow, that's really good isn't it? Yeah, I mean I don't know what it is down south, it's like 2 quid a litre still in it. Oh, 125 quid a litre, yeah. yeah. And yeah. what's the price of a pint, 10 grand? Four. Four, yeah. four grand. Yeah, don't exaggerate Thomas. <laughs> six pound up north which is still ridiculous that is that is a joke isn't it yeah we've just been right right in the center of bruges in one of the little tourist trap um sort of fast food huts to get the obligatory 
um, cone of chips that you must have when you go. Basically, when you're in Bruges, you get offered chocolate, <laughs> be uh, Belgian waffles, beer, and chips everywhere. Um, you can't get away from any of them. So we had to take one for the team and have some chips. So we've gone there and a little tray of chips is like a fiver or something. It's the, in the main square, we, we couldn't have found a more tourist trap place to go if we tried, but obviously time's limited. We have needed to get in, see everything, do a bit of filming, get out again. So we've let them have their way with us. Um, 330 mils of beer. Uh, one one euro fifty. That in Manchester in Hawksmoor is I think a friend of mine went there the other weekend. It's six pound fifty for a can. <laughs> Nothing was on draft because obviously it's too posh to serve draft lag. I know you was telling me that yeah, before, yeah. weren't you? It's all of us um, scumbags up north only drink by the pint, don't we? He just nearly got killed. Yeah, I saw that. Point. Wow. Shame we didn't have the camera facing that way. Um, still, at least people got to see my large face instead. <laughs> worried large face. <laughs> I, tell you, I was worried because if I'd have got that on film, 250 quid on you'd been framed. Oh, yeah. Does well, that still exist? You I doubt car. it. No, <laughs> I'm old. Yeah. One thing I do like about this car, though, what I'll mention, mate, is that head up display, even in as bright. It's as awesome, light, isn't it? it? Yeah, you've got to think with the lux levels of today. It's so bright and that is clear as day. You can't actually see that, what I'm pointing at, but it just makes life easier, it's comfy. And for, for this, I was, I was saying to Jim before we came with electric cars, I've not really been the guy that's quite sold on them, but we've been in this now for two days. I've drove it a bit yesterday in England and this is the second time driving today. I honestly think I could live with it. It's comfortable and it does everything that a petrol car and a diesel car does really and more. For the for a, like a tour like this though, I mean it's it's just brilliant, isn't it? And we are putting it to the test. There's yeah. a, a lot of people with EV say, yeah, well, you, it's diesel car. You can get 600 miles out of a tank with an EV. You can only get 250 or 300. But the reality is, we're putting that whole thing to the test of we're going to use the battery until it's virtually flat and then charge it if we need to. And so far, it's I think it's holding up brilliantly. It's, it's doing really good. Things as well. How many people do 600 miles in one straight go without stopping? Mm -hmm. On a 600 mile journey, it's going to take you what? To drive 10 hours? Well, I, we're driving down to Folkestone in my diesel car to meet that's, you. That's Folkestone. Uh, um, but sorry, my friend <coughs> is, is from the north. <laughs> I actually thought it was Folkestone. Yeah. That's how it's spelt. Um, saying that, there's a place in Manchester called Pennystone, but it's spelt Penis Stone. So. Oh. Penis tone, sorry, it's well. I'd say I did go to the doctor with that once. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, that, my, that drive I did yesterday to meet you was 300 miles from my doorstep down to Folks, Folkestone, is it? Folkestone. Folkestone. Um, and I did that and it took me six hours. I stopped once. Look at that house. Sorry, folks, you can't see that, but there's quite a nice looking house. It's beautiful. Um, but yeah, six hours it took me to get down from Manchester and I was knackered by the end of that. And you got to think these lorry drivers, they'll probably do eight hours of driving in a day and they can extend it to 10 hours, two days a week. So as Jim says, when are you going to drive 600 miles in a day? You're not going to do it. I don't and, you, think... and if you did, you're going to stop for half an hour yeah. to have some food and stuff at the bare minimum. Yeah. But probably you're going to stop three times. If, if you can drive 600 miles without stopping for a week, then I take my ass off to you and I'll, I'll accept that EVs need bigger range, but so far this is proving more than what we need to get to where we want to go. I think the difference as well is how aerodynamic they are. This this car was obviously designed basically in a wind tunnel. Mm. Um, every curve on this is for a reason. <clears throat> some people like the design, some don't, but everything's done for a reason. And that means that the range that's actually advertised is sort of quite realistic. Yeah. Where some of the cars you get into and it's just blatantly not. Um, it might be able to be achieved in lab conditions and if you know the moon and the sun are in perfect alignment and everything else and that you're hypermiling in the thing but give it to me and stick the aircon on and everything else and you know in my normal use case anyway sometimes I don't get anywhere near the claimed no. range and uh, this car is proved to be 
pretty decent for that. Well, my uncle's EQC, I think from memory, they're quoted at two, 250 or uh, 230 mile range. He's never once got 200 miles out of it. It's always at 170, 180. And this at the minute has given no indication to say that he's not gonna achieve what the full range is. Yeah, I think it's done, it's done really, really well so far. Um, so, so far this morning, you've seen we had that little stop at Dunkirk. That was stop one. Um, we, we stopped overnight last night, literally right next to the Euro Tunnel. So we got up very early. Uh, I've had two hours of kit because I'm a lunatic and I don't sleep. Um, literally got, got straight into the Euro Tunnel. Uh, then... <laughs> I couldn't resist, mate. I could not resist doing that, sorry. And that's another perk of this car that you've lost your train of thought now. Just um <laughs> just asking for a mate, but have you got any spare pants? <laughs> it's literally jaw snappingly quick. It's well, neck snapping was there, the correct <laughs> save. <laughs> Honest our best the best save on range, haven't we? Yeah. What was we an eco? That yeah. was sport mode. But we'll we'll show some better shots of that soon. We're gonna do a standing start and it's it's mental. impressive, isn't it? Yeah. Going back to when you said with the aerodynamic design though as well, one thing that I really like with this massive fan of Porsche or Porsche the correct term um, and on the Targas uh, the very old ones that had the whale tail I think they've took a bit of inspiration with a design from Porsche to do this this is my personal opinion it's not quoted from Hyundai it's just something that I think looks very Porsche don't know if they'll take that as a compliment or what I think they should yeah um, yeah I definitely think they should the um by the way, I call it Porsche as well. I find it a bit affected when people say Porsche. Yeah, I think you're trying to make it sound posher than what it actually is. Yeah, definitely. <clears throat> yeah. Um, what was I talking about before you broke my neck? Do you want me to break your neck again? No. Oh. Sorry. I, I, I've really, I feel like I've ruined... He was on to a point there. Oh, I was. It's brilliant as well. Mod modern day technology. Just watch it back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, good shout. <laughs> I think I was talking about Dunkirk. Was you? Yeah, so we went to Dunkirk. Uh, we did a little bit of filming there. Had a mooch about. Had the world's smallest coffee. Um, it was a. It was basically a, a hummingbird's beak full of, full of coffee. It was a thimble. Obviously, there's it it's an espresso cup, and then there's one that you get in a doll's house. And <laughs> even with my childlike hands, it it was small. Yeah. Uh, and the coffee. Yeah. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Help me out. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I can't say I was contrary to that uh, conversation or that, that um, experience. Yeah, and then um, yeah, straight up to Bruges from there. All the roads are just incredible, though, aren't they? Yeah, just so, barely a joint in any of it. There's not even a piece of chewing gum on the tarmac. That's how clean it is here. I mean. I could easily video the time up for you for the next two hours worth of driving, but I'm pretty sure it would bore you endlessly. Uh, but it's such a clean country. And I'd, like I said before, I think England has a lot to learn from Europe. And they should do because it's such a clean country. You could literally eat your dinner off the floors in places. Um, and every car park you go to doesn't smell like urine, does it? It's, it's not, so... not until you walked in, no. <laughs> <laughs> but I was, say, I was saying to Tom that I was over here with the wife and kids the other week, um, as I've probably already mentioned, depending on how I edit this video. But we went into a multi-storey car park in Calais, and Calais is not maybe the most upmarket town in the world. And they're using a floor polisher on the tarmac in a multi-storey car park in basically an abandoned shopping mall with about four shops in it. I mean, I don't ever recall seeing anyone cleaning a car park floor at home. No. It's, it's just, it, it's madness to think that they go to that level. I think we were getting a bit political before talking about this, and I said people that have done wrongdoing in the UK, i.e. have gone through the criminal justice system and they've ended up in prison, when they get community service or they're looking for a job, there should be employment for that. Go around picking fad dimps up or putting bottles in bins, and the, the whole place would just feel a lot nicer to live, and that, that's kind of my view on it. If you've got a different view. You did also well. say that it was misunderstood, didn't you? <laughs> no, Which I did not. Say I thought <laughs> no. each to his own. But I, I certainly don't share that opinion. Oh, so, well, I don't know. <laughs> 
you come away with someone and you learn things about them that you <laughs> you didn't know before. You do realise you could get me absolutely cancelled. <laughs> <laughs> we're fine, mate. We haven't got anything already. So <laughs> I know, yeah. We're not going to get cancelled. We're amateurs in this world of automotive. Yeah. Being treated like royalty this week. But, Definitely. Uh, so, staying. <clears throat> yeah, and on that front, you know, massive, massive thanks again to Hyundai primarily for lending us this car and letting us take it abroad. Um, obviously, I get lots of cars to review on the channel, um, but you don't often get the chance to take them abroad, and it takes quite a bit of a Herculean effort for someone to actually support you and and make the arrangement so you can take it abroad. So, big thanks to Robin at Hyundai for um, for sorting this out for us, and huge thanks to Lease Loco for for sponsoring it because you know me and Tom have are both plugging away at at this YouTube thing a lot but honestly the the, the money it brings in it doesn't, and, it doesn't you, pay the bills no unless you're a very very large youtuber doing stuff like this off your own back is impossible mm -hmm. and it's only with the support of Lisa Loco that have been able to do this I've said before in the past Tom actually asked me last night said sort of so would you buy an EV and <clears throat> you may have heard me say this before you may not but I would say, no, I'd lease one. Yeah. And that's not because the video is sponsored by Lease Loco. It's because look at what's happening at the moment. People that have bought quite a lot of EVs 12 months ago suddenly have had massive, massive depreciation on them. And if you look at it, they'd have been so much better off to have leased because they've got something, they pay a set price for it, and then they give it back at the end. And if that car happens to have lost its shirt in the two or three year period that they've had it not their problem and um the other point i always make is that the way we are i mean it's still relatively early days for ev and for the battery technology and huge leaps and bounds are being made all the time and let's say for example you go out and buy yourself a brand new tesla model 3 and you buy it uh for one thing, Tesla are disrupting the market all the time and manufa other manufacturers do have to react to that at some point. Um, but secondly, what about when Tesla suddenly says, oh, the Model 3's now got 500 miles of range, the new facelift one's got 500 miles of range yeah. or 450. What does that do to the value of yours? Um, so I think, you know, people think I'm some sort of leasing evangelist and I don't think it's always the answer for everyone, but it can be if you obviously find the right deal and lease loco is my obvious place to go everyone on there's vetted um it compares all the top providers it and, really and prices I, I was i'm sorry to interrupt there but i i found on their website most people don't know what is a good deal and when it's a good deal with lease loco you can go on their website and it'll tell you if the car is at its cheapest price ever or it's back to where it was two years ago or even a couple of months ago it'll it'll give you a graph like a stock market chart to say are you getting a good deal or not and i think that's something that not not many companies do i don't think i've seen another company do it apart from them yeah it's very transparent in that respect definitely one thing i was going to say on there <coughs> sorry is um you know, it's going on about cars and residual value and all that. Yeah. <clears throat> and I was going to say, I look at like an electric car as a piece of technology because it is electric and batteries deplete. Why the hell would you want to own one when you can just keep getting a new? You don't get, you don't keep the same iPhone for 10 years, do you? No, exactly. You get a new one every two years. Yeah. Yeah, completely agree. Folks, the charging on this epic trip of ours is being supported by Clenergy EV. Now, you might not have heard of Clenergy before, but they're basically a software provider that sits between the charge points and the vehicles and the users. So imagine you're running a big company fleet. Uh, obviously, your drivers need to have loads of different apps to be able to use all the different charge points. Lots of them don't actually accept contactless payments at the moment. So rather than that, obviously there's no fuel card solution as such, but Clenergy EV can help you. Clenergy EV work with over 300,000 OCPB charging stations across Europe. And what it essentially does is give you an RFID card or a little fob, and you can simply go and use that or any one of uh, any of those 300,000 chargers, and you get charged centrally by Clenergy EV. 
So if you're managing a large fleet, you've got drivers all over the place, they literally go up to the charging solution, can be any one of those supported charging solutions, tap that and they begin charging. So now going to plug in the Ionic 6 route at this Ionity charging station, which is obviously a rapid charger. So we're going to plug that into the car. Thus, we're going to go over here. Got my Clenergy card. Just going to stick it on there. And we can see uh, it's in Dutch at the moment, which is not great. We're an Englishman preparing to charge. This usually takes a few seconds. There we go, the car's now charging. So at this particular Ionity station, no contactless payments available. Unless you've got the app, you can't charge, unless you've got something like this. So go and check out Clenergy. I'm gonna pop the details on the screen for you and in the video description. Uh, they provided all the charging for us on this trip. And uh, obviously today, this is the first time we've used it, but tomorrow, We'll be using an EV as people, people normally do, so we'll be using it in several different places. So uh, yeah, all good so far. So obviously when charging cars, a lot of people say it's rather boring, but one way we've kept ourselves entertained is spreading the word by applying some uh, branding to this charger, which hopefully people can continue to look at every day they charge. And we'll get some Dutch fans, mate. What do you reckon? Done. So I've had the car plugged in at that Ionity charger now for like 38 minutes mm -hmm. and we're up to 98% battery. It was so rapid. When we first plugged in, it was literally going like... What just, was it doing? <laughs> what were you sure? <laughs> <laughs> literally. <laughs> um, but it was just so quick. It was massively impressive, wasn't it? Uh, yeah. And we've gone into this super cool retro McDonald's. I'll put some footage up of that now. Uh, it looks like the first ever McDonald's. I don't know if it's a dutch thing or if that's a one-off mm. but it was wicked in there jukebox everything very you, cool you even sat on ronald mcdonald's knee didn't you mate? i did yeah <laughs> yeah it's a special moment <laughs> um so we're going to go into the center of eindhoven now um starting to feel a little bit jet lagged almost it's but, weird isn't it it's the, the fact you've been to well this was country number four yeah in england and about two hours kip yeah, um, which is ironic, really, because he snores um, like a bear. I heard it for two minutes, fell asleep, and then I woke up and went, you didn't snore loud last night? And he goes, yeah, it's because I didn't sleep. <laughs> and he drove the first leg, so... It's hard when some bloke's trying to get his arm around you all night. It's... <laughs> but it was a double bed, wasn't it? Yeah, well, obviously. <laughs> Not. <laughs> it was. Uh, <laughs> He's lying. We're, we're um, going into the centre of Eindhoven now, so, yeah, yeah off we trot. Who's not good at that? Deutsch is German. Dutch is different. It's a different. Uh, I'm not having that. It's all the same. It all sounds the same, doesn't it? Mind you, you think you speak English. Don't well, you speak so. Spanish in France, so you're even worse. <laughs> anyway, what, what do you want to tell them? We're in Eindhoven and we're outside the Philips Stadion, the home of PSV Eindhoven. Um, we've just driven through Eindhoven. Um, we're not sort of hanging around too long, but that's no, really cool. Um, as usual, everyone's going around on bikes on all these cycle lanes that people actually use um everywhere's really clean again again lovely. and we're gonna do things in style and get the old joystick out and get some better pictures of that cue the shots let's cut to that now Eindhoven's the fifth largest city in the Netherlands and as well as its famous football team, it's also home to DAF trucks and Philips electricals. We were starting to feel the effects of the day folks so we quickly made our way towards our final destination. Eindhoven done, on to Duisburg. I'm not sweating, it's the sun cream because I'm English and I'll, uh, I'll end up, what, what do they call us in Spain? Cangrejos, crabs. <laughs> Now, en route to Duisburg, I did have my first ever experience with the German Autobahn, which, if you don't know, has areas that have absolutely no speed limit. Now, you'll see more about this in part two of this video over on Tom's channel. Send it. Full send, send it. Full send in an Ionic 6. <laughs> oh my. What? Flash him, get him out of the way. <laughs> made We've made it to Germany. We're here, folks. Uh, we are now going to go and get some grub here in Germany. 
Germany. Um, so yeah, wish us luck. But do us a favor, make sure you do look at our sponsors because I'll repeat what Jim said, without this, it would not have been possible. And if you show a bit of support with what we've done, we could probably bring more things like this and hopefully get you involved at some point. Lease Loco is the number one place to go to when looking for a car lease in the UK. It's the best car leasing comparison site there is. Full stop, underlined, in bold. Uh, Clenergy EV have been kind enough to help us out with the charging, which was massive for them. New relationship, brilliant people. And of course, massive thanks to Hyundai for lending us what is an epic car. I mean, we are loving that car, aren't we? Yeah, your bad pronunciation's got better as well, hasn't it, mate? Um, yeah. Was it Hyundai? Hyundai. Hyundai. So we finally made it in Germany, and more specifically, Duisburg. It took a bit longer than we thought with a bit of traffic along the way. But more importantly, mate, we completed it. We five, five countries in a day in an EV. Who thought it was possible? It was awesome, wasn't it? Yeah. And it, really what did good. we charge for in the end? Half an hour, wasn't it? To, and to do how many miles was it? Are we not, I can't say. Like 320 something or yeah, some somewhere in that region. We've still got plenty of battery left in here, yeah. enough to get us like half the way back to to Lille where we're getting yeah. this evening. Um, basically, we're now going on to, to Dusseldorf and uh, because we didn't get to show you any of Germany really, um, we're going to go to Dusseldorf. We're going to show you that. That's going to be over on Tom's channel and everything else we do today, that second part of the video, which is basically our drive home, is gonna be over on Tom's mm. channel. So go and check it out, folks. And if you like any of my content and you come to my channel for my videos, then you're gonna love his because it's better. So <laughs> go over there and subscribe. Basically anything in this video that you've seen that looks really amazing and really well shot, it's because he did it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you're driving most of the way, so someone had to do it. <laughs> yeah, but but like the drone stuff, all that sort of stuff, like he's quite talented with that sort of stuff, even though he is from the north. Appreciate um, that. That's a compliment. <laughs> you should, you should. So if you want to watch the second part of this video, uh, see a little bit of Dusseldorf, see the trip down to Lille, where we're going to end up tonight, and then tomorrow when we go back down towards Calais, uh, head over to Tom's channel, the link for that is going to be over there. How do you know it's not over there? I don't. I always get this messed up. It's either that way or that way. In. I'm just guessing it's going to be <laughs> over there. So go and click on that. Go and check it out. Please, thumbs up. Please uh, subscribe if you haven't already done so. And we'll see you soon. See you soon.